um, Dr. Wolfgang Fengler from the World Data Lab. He'll be talking a little bit about some recent research that we've been doing together on the next billion um, entrants and the last billion for financial inclusion. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Shana. Thank you, everybody. Shamina and team, congratulations. You have really a great talent to pull off cool events with a lot of cool people, and I'm humbled to be part of it. Um, as Shana just said, we, uh, when we put the numbers together for this event, we wanted to call it the next billion, the next billion inclu financial inclusion. We had to redo it. It's actually the last billion. And uh, it's actually, for me, one of the most untold success stories that you are part of, the fact that we can talk about the last billion. It's still a billion people that don't have access to basic or advanced financial services but it is soon the last billion. And I want to give you some numbers and some um, context for the AI discussions you have had to see how we can actually reach the last billion and have access to finance for all. Um, so I'll do a little, those of you who know me, I always want to show you some numbers and some, do some data entertainment and exercises with you. How do we get to this last billion? Um, first, we are all a little more than 8 billion here on the planet now, around it, 8 billion. But for those who are the focus, the target audience, so to say, for financial services, it's actually mostly young adults and adults. And so if you remove the children, which are 2 billion in the world, we get 8 billion. And if they, the parents are doing well, the children should also do well. So we have a 6 billion. And what I'll do now is you can organize these 6 billion, and you're all part of these 6 billion adults. I think there's no young children here. You can organize them by age and by wealth. And um, here are the numbers. So there's, of those of you younger here, you're 1.8 billion in the world. Uh, those of my generation, the, the, the Gen X, uh, but also the Gen Y, the millennials, are 2.5 billion. And the seniors, which is the biggest growth sector, by the way, 800 million. That gives you 6 billion. Now, what's equally interesting, or more interesting is, and I didn't realize this, although I did so much number crunching, is when you organize in these billion, one billion after another, and see how much money they have. And you may know from the SDGs, the, the big uh, SDG one target, $2 a day is extreme poverty. You get very clean numbers. So zero to five is the first billion. That's the poor billion. That's the billion we should focus on most today and tomorrow. Then there's the next billion that you could call vulnerable um, that moves into the third billion as well. And then you get the lower middle class and you get the more affluent parts of the world. So that's how it is, huh? five, 10, 15, 25, 50 and plus. That's the six billion in the world that MasterCard wants to reach, the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth wants to address. Now, what I, we have done here for you is to create a little data model and put two data sets together. One is the spending, how much money do people have, and the other is who has access to finance. Nobody has yet put it so clearly together, and that's what I want to share with you. What you see here is one way to reach access to finance, just make people richer. That's what happened the last 15 years. I hope you saw the animation. The, the light line is where we were 15 years ago. The dark line is today. Um, actually, a lot of progress. And even COVID, you may have seen, uh, remember, in the moment it was stuck in 2020 that we got stuck, but then we unstuck it. That means there's this little belly now that you see uh, above the threshold. $10. Why $10? Because 15 years ago, that's when people had access to finance. Everybody above $10 could expect to have a bank account or some type of basic financial service. So one way is to make people richer, but it's a long journey and there's still a lot of people below that $10 threshold. So what could we do else than just help to make people richer, which is important, but it is slow. It is actually the other thing, going the other direction, making it easier to access financial services, make the poor in included in that system. And here's the progress. And I think you've all been part of it. And I hope if nobody has told it yet, please tell everybody the threshold is not $10 anymore. The threshold today is $5. At $5, many in the world can access basic financial services. And given that's an average, some countries are doing better than that. And we should learn from those countries. And one of the other big surprise and insight, I'm looking at Uyi here as well, is actually Africa is leading the way. Uh, in, that, in that sector, in that uh, successful inclusion. So let's add up the numbers. I'll give you the numbers because you should know what the numbers say and show. So basically, we started at 2.8 billion 15 years ago and uh, 2010. Almost a billion is what you could call because of the income effect. So people became richer and then almost, uh, they're obviously nice clients to have. All of you are, are very much appreciated by your banks. So those then move up. That's 
easy, or, but important, but more important was actually the threshold effect that innovation and inclusion happened. And so people who would be excluded in the past, but a lot in the second billion, by the way, and part of the first billion only, only part, have now been included. Um, we still have actually a little more than a billion, 1.2 billion excluded. So there's still financial exclusion in the world at a substantial rate. And we project if things keep going the way they have been going, we'll reach the billion in November 2026. November 2026 will be at the billion. Every second, roughly two to three people are being included. But that's too slow and maybe too late. And you and we all should work on it to make it faster. And I'll show you uh, in a minute how we can make that transition faster. So let me do a little recap on the trajectory of financial services. Because financial services are not financial services. Some is basic and some is advanced. And even those who have now basic services should try to move up and, uh, and we should help them get more resilient. So the zero to two block are the extreme poor. They're still heavily cash-based and they're, they're, they're hard to crack. They're hard to reach, but, but some have, success, have, have done it, but they're hard to reach. At $2, many countries have shown that with basic low-tech, um, traditionally low-tech, um, now also with a mob, with smartphone it works, you can have mobile money access. And it's important to talk about mobile money here as well. What average is $5, but some have achieved at $2. At $6, people can start to have internet access, often through the phone. At $7 to $10, it's now the, uh, the bank account. You remember it was $10, it's slightly below now. That's more regular financial services. And then people start to become financially resilient. What, what, does, what does this mean? Well, financially resilient means, among others, that if you have a shock, you'll survive. Um, you may move back to eight, seven, eight, nine dollars per day spending. You may move out of the middle class, but you'll never move back to two dollars, to extreme poverty, to hunger. That's at least what, what research shows. But then there's more advanced services, and uh, obviously this institution, credit cards, and many others are part of that, that system that then at $35, people start to buy insurance. They could actually buy earlier, and interestingly, you know, if you think of motorcycles in India, they are all over the world, but often all over the country, but they're not often insured. But yeah, at $35, if you're an insurance company and representative here, you can expect there will be good clientele out there. So that's the, the machinery on financial inclusion. Um, at $2, it's possible, and the, the strength of your industry and your sector has been that actually you got deeper than technology sector, and I know today is about technology and financial inclusion, but you almost went ahead of the digital transformation and the technology because that only starts with, uh, with roughly the, uh, the third billion in, in this column. So that's the overview. What I have now is to give you a sense what really happened the last, uh, the last decade. So this is the six billion that you see lined up. The first billion, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Orange means you're included. The poor were not included in the past. What happened the last 10 years? There's two things that happened. One is there's more affluence. So more people are in the six. The six billion is now full before it wasn't because we only had five and a half billion adults. But look at that delta. The poor have been the biggest beneficiary of financial inclusion the last 10 years. And why was that? Because of mobile money partly. So people use mobile money as an entry to financial inclusion. But even in some countries, bank accounts are now available to the poorest, the bottom billion. So that's one success, and as I uh, mentioned before, if you have 33%, that's an average. So I'm looking at the bottom billion now, 33%. Who is doing better, who is doing worse? The logic of average is this, some are doing better, some are doing worse. Some countries, and this data is, uh, is two years old, so it was before Nigeria's transformation, so Nigeria's number look even better today now. But Nigeria and DRC are slightly below the world average, as are other countries, including some Asian countries. Congo, interestingly, benefiting from mobile money. China includes the poor well. Obviously, Chinese poor are also not as poor as the rest of the world. They are more $4 poor than $2 poor people. But look at Uganda. And Uganda is not the front runner in the world. It is a strong country, but uh, it is because of mobile money that inclusion has happened. And Uganda is not alone. Many countries followed Uganda's, Uganda's footsteps, and Uganda obviously follows in Kenya's footsteps, where mobile money was basically invented and scaled. This is in real time. To give you a sense, the machine, every second, your work is 
bearing fruit. Every second people are being included in many parts of the world and you see many African faces and animations here. And this is a little mock-up we have done for you and that we want to do deeper with the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth that you can click every country, every segment, every age group. So to conclude, let me tell you now the answer to the question. How can we reach the last billion? Um, we're starting from 1.2 billion. And um, there will be innovation, there'll be AI, but there's also something more basic, which is learning from the best, learning from those who do better than the average. So if we just did the China, Poland, Ethiopia model, which is fine, but it's not the best, half a billion would be included. If we would lower this threshold from $5 to $3.5, make it easier to access the system, economies in scale, of scale help too, we'd be half a billion less excluded. If we go to the best performers now, and I include the top star here, Uganda, Ghana, South Africa, and South Africa wasn't great a few years ago, it caught up. We have another 270 million people included. That means the remainder is the $2 threshold, which is the SDG1 threshold. So if this group and this community here in, U in this week, in the UN week, was successful to eliminate poverty, you would also eliminate financial inclusion. And that's, I think, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a cause worth fighting for. Thank you for doing this great work here, and thank you for having me here today.